Hey there, in today's video I'd like to share a very deep positional queen sacrifice just for one minor piece. And we have already started games featuring queen sacrifices, but the games that I shared in the past were well known. Whereas this game is actually not that popular because the players are not well known players or top players, but actually maybe due to this fact that this game contains many inaccuracies, we can see very flashy moves that are much harder to find on games played by top players. So let's get started with this masterpiece. After the move e4 and c5, we get a cc and defense. And after knight to f3, d6, d4, pawn takes and knight takes. This is fairly standard, we get an open cilian. And after knight to f6 and knight to c3, here black play the move g6. And we get a dragon variation where black plans to finketo the bishop. This is normally a very sharp opening. But actually here white play the move bishop to e2, which is a fairly quiet move. And this also shows us that you can play quiet moves in the opening, but you can still reach very exciting middle game positions. Here the move bishop to e3, planning to go f3 and queen d2, for example after bishop to e3, bishop to g7, f3, and now white might have ideas to go queen to d2, castle long, bring the bishop to c4. This will normally lead to sharp role play, but in this game we're still gonna get a very exciting game, even after white plays a seemingly quiet move. So after bishop to e2, here black played knight to c6, bishop to g7 is also a logical follow-up to the move g6, but black played knight to c6, and here white also played a fairly solid move and went knight to b3. Black might have ideas to go bishop to g7, putting some pressure on d4, so knight to b3 is a move that makes some sense, the knight is safer on b3, and after bishop to g7, white castled, and here black played bishop to e6, this is still fairly standard, black could have castled, which, spoiler alert, black didn't manage to do in the whole game. And here white played f4, which is a typical idea in this line, where white castles short. White tries to get f5, gaining space on the king side. And here black played the move rook to c8. This is a fairly standard move in the decision defense. The rook is normally well placed on the semi-open c file. But in this particular line, a move that is also fairly common is queen to c8, preventing f5 by white. So here after rook to c8, white played the move f5, attacking the bishop, here black played bishop to d7, black could have also taken the knight on b3, and in this position white gained some space on the king side, on the other hand, now white gets this e5 square for the knight, so we already get a sharp position, and here white continued playing aggressively and went g4. It was probably a bit better to go king to h1, because as we'll see this king might be a bit exposed on this diagonal, but here the move g4 worked out well for white because black has to be very accurate in this position. Here black played the move knight to e5, but black had to be a bit more active and should have taken on f5. And the idea is that now, since black didn't castle, black might want to open lines against white's king. For example, after g takes e5, the g file would be available for the rook to eye the king. Or if white takes with the e pawn, now black gets this idea of queen to b6, giving a check. And after a move like king to h1, knight to e5, we see how black will get counter play against the king after bishop to c6. So this was the correct follow up for black. And the point is that since white is playing quite aggressively, black has to counter attack quickly. Otherwise, white will start gaining a large space advantage as it happened in the game. So after knight to e5, white went g5, attacking the knight. The knight doesn't have any good squares to go besides knight to g8. And white went knight to d5, moving forward. And this position is already quite dangerous for black. Here black should have tried something like h6, trying to open the h-file. Instead black went f6. Other alternatives like e6 wouldn't work, because here white has the move f6. The point is that after pawn takes and pawn takes, white is going to capture the rook on h8. And after f6, here white will definitely not take and help black develop the knight. White will simply continue developing. And additionally now the e6 square has become weakened, so here white played the move bishop to e3, simply developing, also attacking this pawn a7, which currently it is not something important for black. Black needs to develop on the king side, here black should have offered this pawn and played something like pawn takes g5 and then try to develop the knight in order to castle. But instead black played b6, and now white went knight to d4, we see how white is centralizing the knights, having a lead in development, so this position is already quite desperate for black. And after king to f7, 
c3, the queen might have ideas to go to this diagonal, I in black's king, here black played queen to e8, and now in this position, queen to b3 was very strong, very quiet, but what I like about this game is that white didn't have to play in romantic style, sacrificing everything, but white did it to create this very nice masterpiece. First of all, white went knight to e6, invading this weak square, and after bishop takes and pawn takes, here black tried king to f8, after king takes and queen to b3, black's king is in trouble, for example after king to d7, bishop to b5, black is having a lot of trouble holding the position together, for example after knight to b6, at the very least white has knight to b4, this knight on c6 is pinned, so white is already winning material in this line. So here after king to f8 again, White could continue with something like queen to b3, white has a very large advantage, white has more development, space advantage, everything you could ask for, but again, white wanted to win in style and went knight takes f6. So now the sacrifices will start, here black captured with the knight, it makes sense because this knight was very passive, the point is that after pawn takes f6, white easily gets the piece back, after queen takes e6, given a check, and after black blocks the check, queen takes e5, this pawn f6 is pinned, so this is just crashing for white. So after knight takes f6, knight takes makes sense, here white capture with the pawn, and after bishop takes, again black doesn't want to capture with the e pawn because d6 will fall, so after bishop takes, bishop to h6, very forcing play by white, king to g8 is the only move, the bishop on f6 is pinned, and now white followed up with another very nice exchange sacrifice, rook takes, and after pawn takes, here we already see one of the main ideas in the game, the king is stuck on g8, the rook on h8 cannot play, and here white captured this pawn on d6. So, so far this looks like a very nice exchange sacrifice that we might see in other games, and here black followed up with the move rook to c6, with the idea to capture on e6 after the queen moves. For example, if the queen goes to a3, here black could capture with the rook on e6, and even here white has compensation for the exchange because black still has some problems to solve, with this king and this rook on h8, but here comes what is probably the most shocking move I've ever seen, queen takes e5, just giving a queen for a knight, so this is probably the nicest piece that black had, the knight on e5, so white simply gives the queen for this knight. And the idea is that after pawn takes and rook to f1, we see how black's pieces are going to be tied up on the 8th rank, so it is very hard for the queen to move because the queen has to guard the f8 square, for example here after queen takes, Rook to f8 is a checkmate. And another important point in this position is that this pass pawn on e6 is actually quite strong. It controls the f7 square as well. And taking on e6 with the rook wouldn't work because after bishop to c4, again, black is totally tied up. The rook is pinned. The queen has to guard the f8 square. So here, white will simply capture on e6 after a move like queen to e7, bishop takes. And after queen takes and rook to f8, we get this very nice checkmate. So this queen sacrifice is just very deep, we might check a lot of lines, but the whole idea is that even though black has a lot of firepower, black is totally tied up. So here black played rook to c8, which makes sense, trying to guard the 8th rank, and here white still has to be very precise, because if black manages to consolidate, black will have an overwhelming material advantage, so here white played the move bishop to d1, in order to bring the bishop to b3, so now bishop to b3 and e7, is a big threat, so black found a very nice resource to keep the game going, rook to c4 and after bishop to b3, the rook cannot move because e7 will follow, but black's idea was to play b5, so giving back some material to hold the position. And here white captured on c4 and after pawn takes, white got some material back, but white still gets a bishop and a pawn for a queen, and amazingly white is the one controlling the game. So now it's a matter of how can white progress, and white found this very nice idea, which is more of an ending idea, which is to create a pass pawn. So white went b3 with the idea to create a pass pawn on the queen side, so black will have another problem to deal with another pass pawn, in addition to the current situation where black's king is basically tied up, covering the f8 square, and here black played the move a5, black had some chances after pawn takes and pawn takes, and then going a5, black wants to get rid of the a pawn and the g pawn, and then try to either give perpetual check or sacrifice the queen in order to reach a stalemate position. So this was one idea in the game that was very hard to find to try to save the game. And after b3 and a5, white simply captured on c4, it doesn't matter that white gets isolated double pawns, the main idea is to get a pass pawn. And after queen to e7, 
Here white has to be a bit careful, going c5 quickly. It's not a good idea because after queen takes, white gives a check. So after king to g2, the whole idea is that white will try to slowly progress and black is going to get in a 6-1 position because black doesn't have a lot of pieces to move, basically the g and a pawn and the queen, so black will run out of moves. Here black tried queen to a3, white defended a2 with rook to f2 and after queen to a7, here white played a waiting move, rook to f1, white actually doesn't have to rush. And in this position, black tried g5, if black tries to wait, for example with queen to e8, c5 is actually very strong, planning to go c6. Or after a move like queen to c5, white also has ideas to invade with rook to f7, and now rook to g7 is just crashing, for example after a4, rook to g7, king to f8, now white gets this discover check, attacking the queen, so white is just collecting a lot of material. So here black tried g5, but after rook to f5, now white has another target. And after g4, c5, now white is pushing the pass pawn. Black cannot capture the pawn because after rook to g5, we get another nice checkmate with the rook on g5 and not on f8. And after c5, queen to d8, c6, queen to e7, c7. Now here black resigned because after queen takes e7, white can decide whether to checkmate with the rook on f8 or g5. So this was just an unbelievable game. Let me know in the comments if you ever saw a game where a queen sacrifice was made just for a minor piece to get compensation in the long run. In any case, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. This will help my channel a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.